Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Gaming With Me, Tony Mo. We're out here, right near this glorious dying star, somewhere in the verse, not sure where, to be honest. We don't know just yet. Floating around, though, in our lovely Aurora. So we've done a 300i free flight, we've done a 300i combat flight, but I haven't spent too much time talking about the Aurora and how I think it handles in just in general, and then also, of course, in the next video, we'll take a look at how it handles in combat situations. Um, there's obviously some big limiting factors when you compare something like the Aurora to the 300i, which is, you know, the Aurora's not really designed for combat. It's not really shaped like that. Its its weight distribution definitely doesn't allow for the, the most agile or easiest of maneuvers in space, and that is obviously something that CIG intended. It's not supposed to be the thing where every single ship, you know, can function in a combat situation as an, in an equal measure. You know, obviously every ship is going to be different. So that is exactly what they were going for. Oh, shush. We will be fine. But one of the things that I enjoy doing with the Aurora is just thinking about the potential for the ship just to be a, you know, a nice little exploring ship. I mean, surprisingly, you know, it has some decent capabilities when it comes to the amo amount of modifications and attachments that you're going to be able to do to it when the full game goes live. And as I've talked about in the past, there's just something about this cockpit that is very 20,000 leagues under the sea. But I think one of the things about the Aurora for a lot of people is that it's probably sitting in their hangar and they're probably ignoring it altogether. You know, they're not really focusing on, hey, you know, what can I do to fly this thing? Or, you know, I have a 300 I have a Hornet. And I think it's a mistake. I think it's uh, a vital, a vital ass, a vital... <laughs> I think flying the Aurora is a vital addition to any pilot's uh, learning skills, to their skill level, to their skills, to their skill set. I'm at a loss for words today, or at least I have the words, but I'm putting them in all in the wrong places. So what I'm trying to say is that by just flying one ship on any level, whether when the game comes out, you know, in, in just Arena Commander, you're limiting yourself to the skill set that you're going to earn. Now, that's, I'm not saying, you know, you have to go out and you're supposed to buy every single ship to be the best pilot, but the fact is, the people who fly a larger variety of ships are going to have more flight skill, and they're going to be able to, to handle those situations when maybe they are stuck in that ship that they don't want to be in. Hell, who knows, maybe one day you're out scouting in your Hornet tracker, you know, doing some bounty hunting, and things go wrong. You end up losing your ship. And your only backup at that current point in time is something like an Aurora, you know? What, what are you going to do? You've never even flown the damn thing. I mean, you're leaving yourself in an absolutely terrible situation at that point by having no previous skill inside of the Aurora. That, that's not something you want to do in a game where, you know, there's permadeath. Your character, when they're, your character's dead, they're dead. That's it. you got to start a new character, and you know, in the same bloodline. I really want to fly through that entire asteroid field over there, but sadly we cannot. I do believe there is a boundary coming up soon. Am I wrong in saying there's a boundary there? Let's find out. Maybe it's further on than I expected. So anyways, <laughs> back to the Aurora. So that's basically what I'm trying to say, you know, for people out there who might be ignoring a ship like the Aurora inside of there. Did they add this whole area? Or am I just that oblivious to knowing that this has always been here and I could fly in it? Oh, there it is. <laughs> you are approaching simulation boundary. I mean, as you can see here, just doing a simple a simple rotation, you know, decoupling and then rotating, it, everything is, is just way, way different inside the Aurora compared to the 300i. I mean, that is the huge gap difference between something like the Hornet or the 300i compared to a ship like the Aurora. And that is something that I think is very important to understand how a ship like this handles for the situ for the for the reasons in the situation that I just stated. Um, not to mention, as someone who maybe decides that the Aurora is going to be your main ship, you know, maybe this is the only ship you own. You didn't spend more than $40 or $50 or whatever it might have been on Star Citizen. All you have is the Aurora. You're going to have to work your way up to the next ship, you know, you're going to have to earn that cash. So this is going to be your ship for maybe several months of game time, you know. Who knows? It depends really how much you're going to be able to play personally. So if you're that person, you know, sitting here and understanding the limits of the Aurora in every situation, in flight situations, in, a, in maybe in a, an escape situation where you're being chased by ships that are, you know, more more equipped for speed and for combat, you're going to want to know the limits of the ship, as well as the limits of your pilot, as you, of yourself, while you're in the ship. 
So one of the nice things about the Aurora, as much as you can still black out, as you can see I'm trying to do there, it is a little bit more difficult to do because of its current speed. And of course all these things uh, can change in the future, you know, we can see things like speed change, uh, we can see things like the, the point at which a, a pilot blacks out, this is alpha, all these things can be modified, but uh, one of the things that I do think is kind of vital to use inside of the Aurora, on and off again, you know, I'm not really a advocate for the comp stability or for the g-force for that matter but maybe in the right situations again you take a look at something like you've just hopped in the ship you haven't even flown the thing uh, something like g-safe and comp stab might be lifesavers for you you know because the last thing you want to do in in that like last last ditch situation you're in the middle of nowhere like i said you lose your hornet tracker you have to get inside this aurora whatever however you got inside this aurora it was loaned to you whatever the story might have been you're in an aurora that you've never flown and you have a long way to go home and there's a lot of risk along the way you know there's people out there still looking for you they recognize that they didn't kill you when they took out your hornet they're still coming for you so you know you're, you could possibly end up being engaged in a combat situation or at least a chase situation now if you don't understand how the aura works if you haven't went in and flown it with all of these things off with g-safe off and started to understand hey this is how this ship functions then maybe comp stability and uh, G, you know, the G-Force, the G-Safe are going to be yeah. huge, huge benefits, uh, and uh, really a big contribution to your to your success, your continued existence as that character in the Star Citizen universe. So, there's definitely some benefits that I know I may have seen, seen may have made it sound in the last videos, uh, like there was absolutely sort of you know no benefit at all, and there's no reason to use G-Safe and Comstab. I think the big thing what I was trying to say was that. There's no reason to learn how to fly a ship with just G-Safe and Comstab on all the time. Learning how to fly without those two things will be beneficial if possible. But there obviously are situations where those two features, those two modes, could be very, very beneficial. Now recently, CIG, Chris Roberts, and one of the lead guys behind the physics programming for the ships put out this huge post over on the RSI website. And if you haven't checked it out, I'll have linked in the description below. But it was a, just a ton of stuff talking about what they're going to be doing in the future with the flight system. Impact. And it all had me very, very excited. I definitely recommend you go check it out. But they talk about all the different modes that they want to have on the ships. And, you know, eventually we're going to have all these different capabilities, these things that we can do on our ship to, uh, to you know, actually modify the way that we interact with the ship in flight whether that be a combat situation or a normal situation. So looking forward to seeing those modifications very, very much. I'm also, there's a very good uh, statement in there that Chris Roberts makes talking about, you know, this, people have to understand that flying in space, the way that they're trying to do it as realistically as possible, they're actually trying to make it, you know, sort of a simulation level thing, is much, much different than fixed wing flight down in atmosphere, you know, where you have air and, and aerodynamics actually matter. And a lot of people have just refused to understand that, to see that, and they'd rather just get angry at all the physics. And, you know, I think those of us who understand that, that situation and are actually going to stay here and, and start to try and understand, okay, this is how this functions and this is what I can do to become better with this are going to be the successful pilots at the end of the day. So those of you guys who are out there who, you know, who've been flying away, you know, trying to understand the system, you know, keep it up, man. Keep it up because you're going to learn how the ships fly. You're going to understand them. You're going to get a better feel for them and you're going to be able to push your ship to the limit. And at the end of the day, you're going to be the better pilot than those people who choose to just sit there and complain and wait for, you know, some magical change to happen. You know, we are going to see changes to the flight system. But the overall feeling of it isn't going anywhere. You know, this isn't about flying planes down on the on planet side. You know, this is about flying ships in space. So, the Aurora. Wonderful little ship. As I said, guys, if you have it in your hangar, I can't recommend taking it out enough. And just doing some free life flight like I'm doing. You know, learning the limits of the ship. It may not look like I'm doing much here, but I'm just starting to understand, you know, how the ship controls how quickly I can rotate in situations. Just how agile is the ship, you know? It's all about... Making that understanding for when you have to do what. I would say that uh, learning to fly in this is actually very similar to trying to put in the best possible lapse time in a racing game. Or, you know, in a racing situation in real life. Where it's all about knowing exactly when you have to brake. Exactly when you need to start braking. Uh, when, you need, when you can get back on the throttle. When you can turn, you know, the car in a different direction. The same thing applies here for the ships. Whatever ship you're in, it doesn't matter. You know, the fact is in space... Your, your ship can actually float for a very long distance. You can sort of skid, so to speak, because of the way that your thrusters react when you turn your ship in certain directions. So you have to sort of under, you have to understand how that works and know when to compensate for it and how to compensate for it. Again, to make sure that you're always where you want to be. 
the last thing you want in a combat situation is to end up someplace that you don't want to be, you know, floating off in a direction that you never intended, or perhaps just skidding maybe even 50 or 60 okay. meters further in one direction than you planned and crashing into an asteroid or another pilot or whatever it may be, you know, understanding that, that level of precision that you need to put your ship where you want to put it is a very vital aspect to flight in any aspect of Star Citizen. You know, right now in Arena Commander, going forward, those are just core values that you're going to have to understand if you want to be an even slightly successful pilot. We're not even talking about being an ace here. We're just talking about someone who can fly their ship, you know, into the hangar of some, you know, docking station on a planet somewhere, you know, without crashing the thing all over the damn place. Now, one other thing I wanted to address, because uh, a couple people actually mentioned this to me, you know, why do you... Do we still need to roll the ship in, in space? You know, since it doesn't... There's no there's no aerodynamics, uh, you know, people are saying. So it doesn't actually matter that the ship is turned sideways, you know, and you're and you're doing an actual, you know, rolling turn. You're, you're pitching the ship, and then you're banking. Banking is actually still a vital thing, and this is funny because they talked about this in the post. Uh, Chris Roberts talked about this, because currently... There is no sort of uh, penalty for turning your ship without banking at a high speed. So you know, if right now, if I just go ahead and start turning the ship, we're doing, well, I get it up to 150. You know, there's no bad, there's no negative here. I'm turning and I'm scrubbing speed. In the future, however, what they want to simulate is, say I'm in something extremely fast. I'm in a 350R. I'm even in a 300i. Those are two quick ships. And I decide that I'm going to go 400 meters per second and try and make a turn without banking my ship. I have a risk of tearing off pieces of my ship at that point. I've overexerted the ship's capabilities at that current, you know, angle, the, the way that I've decided to bank that. Because by banking the ship and turning, I'm allowing all of that force to be to be distributed a length along the bottom of my ship. I have this massive surface area. Whereas when I'm sideways like this, I don't. You know, I have the wings. I have whatever, you know, in something like the Aurora, you know, if you push it too far, you could end up maybe tearing off one of your rear wings or doing some serious damage to the, the whole entire back half of your ship, whereas everything happens. The engine's back there, uh, your cargo, your storage space. Those are all things that we're going to have to worry about in the future. So I guess at the end of the day, what I've been saying with these videos is that, you know, practice, practice, practice. As I said before, the free flight mode is a blessing, and I think people don't understand how, how much of a benefit they can Why? seek from this by messing around with it now. Am I really? Or is it below me? Oh, there it is. <laughs> and, uh, you know, starting to get a feel for the ships and practicing for when the game comes out. You know, at least for me, I would like to try and keep, you know, my first character alive as long as possible. That's going to be sort of a mini challenge for myself, is seeing how long I can keep this, this guy alive, you know. And at the same time, how much can I learn about the different ships? Because, you know, bounty hunting, that's something I plan on doing uh, and exploring. I think a lot of those things just require that you have really deep knowledge of your ship and, and how to use it in different scenarios. So practice, 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 guys. In the next video, we'll take a look at the Aurora Inside of Combat, talk a little bit about some of its very, very low um, tolerances when it comes to high-speed combat maneuvers. I mean, this ship is... It's like driving around in a Cadillac sometimes when you're, <laughs> when you're trying to do combat maneuvers. But if you guys have any questions about my thoughts on the Aurora or just, uh, you know, a little bit more on what I think of the direction that they're trying to take the, the flight system, you know, the way that, like I'm saying, everything is sort of staying the way it is, or just any questions in general, let me know in the comment section below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.